it has been a while since I've done one of these and I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who has reached out after each video and shared their stories. Um, I want to hear, I want to hear, and I want to listen to what you've gone through and what you're learning and your own personal journey with Jesus. And it was really on my heart today to make this video with a particular message. Um, of course, for my fresh Jesus community of people who previously were involved in new age occult alternative spiritual things, but also for the regular church going Christian community to understand something deep about those who have come out of new age and how best to handle us as we're coming to you um, seeking counsel and wisdom. But first, before I begin, I'd like to pray. So if you would, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, El Shaddai, Elohim, El Roi, King of the universe, my beloved Jesus Christ, Yeshua Hamashiach, and so many other names. I thank you for delivering me home to you. I thank you for delivering every single one of my brothers and sisters home to you. Thank you for changing our lives. And more than that, thank you for giving us yourself. Thank you for being real. Thank you for being perfect. Thank you for being good. I pray today, Father, that you would help me to speak only what is pleasing to you. Please increase my sensitivity to your spirit, that I might be gentle and wise, bridled to you, listening and discerning and obeying your subtle promptings. Please increase my sensitivity to your discernment what you are saying. Thank you for speaking to the depths of my soul. I pray that you'd cover those who might be listening to this video, those that it is meant for. And I just pray, Lord, that you would draw near only those that you intend to hear this message. Please help me get out of the way and let your son speak through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Coming out of the New Age is a long, perilous, taunting, daunting journey. And it's so hard. It's so hard because you're not just coming to believe in something that you weren't sure was true. In many of our cases, you're, you're taking a full 180. You're, you're turning your entire universe right side back in after a lifetime of it being inside out. For many of us, it's not like the religious practicing that we went through just suddenly becomes a living. It's that our entire viewpoint of reality is now dramatically changed. And it can be so challenging to orient back into life to know what's real 
And I remember for me, I went through months of struggle. Do I even exist? How much of me is real? Am I allowed to continue existing? Or when he says it's no longer Christ, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, does that mean that I'm supposed to completely dissipate? How literally am I supposed to be taking the texts of the Bible? Are they trustworthy? Is anything trustworthy? And it was questions like these that ultimately led me to relying predominantly on the Holy Spirit and God himself's voice. Because I knew, I knew one thing was true, that I could trust God. But what I didn't know was how to do that. Did I do that through reading the Bible? Did I do that through talking to his people? Or was there something else? And I found that the more people I talked to or the more sermons I listened to, the more lost and the more confused I got about who my God really is. It was only in the early morning hours and by his divine grace that he increased my hunger for learning directly from him that he by the power of his holy spirit taught me how to seek him and so for five months at the beginning of my journey i spent every day from nearly 5 a.m to noon in the word singing praising him journaling doing whatever he commanded me to sometimes that included going on a kayak ride or eating food. <laughs> but I spent five months one-on-one -on -one with my creator and those were the best months of my life. Granted, I was being completely rearranged about my understanding of reality and I was disoriented much of the time. I had a really hard time interacting with other humans and I was incredibly sensitive once I started to go back out into the world. It was so hard for me coming through that journey. I felt like when he talks about the virgin bride in Revelation and in other places in the Bible, I really felt like I had become a virgin bride. My eyes were clean. My heart was clean and made new. My womb my body, my mind were completely clean and empty, ready for his voice alone to fill me, his hands to mold me. I was ready and seeking to be just made into my father's will with no interference, but his Holy Spirit leading me in my life and in my ways. And so coming into the world as it is now with so much digital media and things was terrifying. I remember going into grocery stores and realizing that the fluorescent lights had demonic sigils in, inside the light fractals. I remember realizing that the cereal boxes and the different options in the grocery store all had these these occult symbology all over them. I, I was overwhelmed by the amount of options. I was overstimulated by the music and not even to mention the energy of the humans around me. It was, it was terrifying, honestly, to come back into this kind of world. And so thankfully, Andrew was such a blessing for me. He did most of the grocery shopping and did most of the interacting with the outside world. And so for those first five months, it was, it was great. But something that really started to hurt and bother me was
leaving the culture of new age where everything is trying to understand the nature of reality to achieve a specific goal. Everybody seems to have their own opinion on how reality is supposed to be operating. Everybody has their own viewpoint. And this viewpoint is made up of a series of past experiences. And having studied psychology in college, I knew that my perspective is simply an accumulation of my past experiences with my perceived um, perception of those experiences that can form opinions and can form biases over time. Basically, the positive and negative uh, the positive and negative experiences I've had over time accumulating different categories of preferences and um, understanding reality based on those things. When I went through my process of being born again, born again, it was like God completely wiped me clean from all my past experiences and all of my perceived preferences of those past experiences, my experience of my experiences. And I was getting a fresh start. And instead of me orienting to reality based on things I'd experienced, I was now being fed the word in small doses. And the Lord knew exactly what I needed to read at the exact day, an exact moment in time that I needed to read it. And it would fill me. And because I was reading it by the prompting of his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit was there with me while I read it, I was receiving the information correctly and it was actually producing fruit in me very quickly my demeanor changed, my personality changed, um, my preferences were being built based on God's preferences and not on my own thinking or understanding. And it was a simple process of being literally hand sculpted by God. He didn't just speak to me through scripture, he spoke to me through life. He interacted with me through everything that I was doing and it was beautiful and it was lovely. When I started to go to church, however, that relationship severely changed. I don't, I don't know what was happening for the other people. But for me, I came into these church spaces looking to share the glory of what God was doing and I expected that professing Christians had gone through something similar, a similar kind of journey that they too had been handmade by God. And you can imagine that I had a a vast surprise when I was met with rules and restrictions and judgment and fear in the people I was meeting that were professing to be followers of Jesus Christ. They'd tell me things like, well, you need to read your Bible every day. Oh, you're a new Christian? You need to be baptized. Oh, you're a new believer? You should join our fellowship group. And these automatic responses were things that I could tell were programmed into them over time, that they've been passed down from their fathers and their fathers and their fathers. But no one was stopping to look at me. No one was seeing me as an individual, as somebody who had just gone through something very scary that I had been involved in a cult and I had already done the thing where I just listened to whatever people thought I needed and done it. I had paid people to tell me what to do. It didn't work and it didn't help me. And now here I was with supposed elders in the faith who 
took no time to stop and ask the Holy Spirit who was standing in front of them and what she needed, but instead tried to prescribe me with their own life and their own experience or what their pastor had shared with them, regardless of if it had work or provo- pr- worked or produced any fruit in their own lives. It was the right answer, the right thing to say that people had agreed upon was the correct answer. And so that's what they were telling me. And I could tell that it was coming from this place and not from a genuine place in their own lives. Namely, because I wasn't really asking for advice. So about a year later, here I am in a similar place. And my relationship with God is worse. It's not better. My relationship with God seems to be the best when I'm around people who don't know him yet. Because it's here that they're not judging me based on their own personal beliefs and theologies. They're not running a script in their background trying to check and make sure that I understand things correctly, waiting to correct me if I'm wrong. They're genuinely seeing me as a person who has been through a drastic change and is simply sharing my story. I feel most myself around people who've gone through something similar in the new age, coming out of new age, or these other testimonies of massive drug abuse or being in gangs or people who have just had these major life overhauls because they've really been changed by the spirit of God and again they're not sitting there trying to correct my theology when I'm telling my personal testimony they're sitting there looking for the handiwork of God because they know their creator and they know mine It hurts me to see so many people so quick to give what they think is the right answer and not take time to consider the answer that the person who's sitting in front of them truly needs. Our God is not a God of one size fits all solutions. In fact, he's a God who healed the blind in several different ways, simply because he knew that we are pattern seekers and we'd rather, in our fallen state, we'd rather cling to a religious process than have to commune with the actual living God. And on top of that, He is a God who is so good, he makes everything unique. Even two trees of the same species, he makes them different and unique. He makes us need different things in different ways. And part of that is because he loves the creativity in molding something to be exactly as he's called it to be and part of that is also because if we're all unique then the only one size fits all solution is to seek the one who made us who made me and I say this because I found in my own journey that simply listening to somebody tell their story is one of the biggest gifts you can give somebody. But more than that, asking God what to do to serve the person he has clearly delivered into your life is the only effective thing that we can do. It's the only thing I can confidently stand before you and say, do this 
and you will succeed. Maybe it's buy them a dress. Maybe it's give them food. Maybe it's share the cold cut gospel. And maybe it's listen to their story. It could be something as wild as ask them about the sickness that their mom is struggling with. Or ask if you can pray for their dog. But the point is your father, our father in heaven knows. He knows what's happening. He knows what we are doing. He knows what we need. And only he can tell you how to properly interact with anything in this reality, including trees and people and butterflies and animals and all sorts of things. Jesus wasn't saying or doing anything that the Father wasn't doing. That doesn't just mean the big stuff. He learned obedience through his suffering. What I wish more people understood is how delicate we are, how sensitive, perceptive, and programmable our subconsciouses are, how because we're made in the image of God, it's so easy to take the way that somebody treats me as the way God does. I wish we were more sensitive to other people's needs instead of our own. I wish we didn't feel the need to insert our stories into other people's lives or try to understand their reality through our own lens. I wish that we would instead as a collective race of humanity. Seek God for understanding about where someone is. And if you already do these things, I just want to say thank you because it's the biggest gift you can give somebody is allowing yourself to be fully bridled to the Holy Spirit. And I know you couldn't actually make that decision for yourself unless he gifted it to you. So thank you, God, for the people that you have caused to deeply understand this truth. Father, please help us. Please help us to seek you and not lean on our own understanding. Please help us to be delicate with one another and not hand them a prescription of an automated drug, an automated religious prescription, what we think that they need. Please help us be prayerful in our communication. Please help our pride die. Please help us get out of the way to trust you to lead to wait for your words and your speaking to pause be slow to speak and to believe that we will be judged for every word that comes out of our mouth please help us be slow to make judgments and to seek your eyes when we do
please bless us with your slowness and your patience and your truth. Father, please, please wake up the church. The collective church body, please wake her up out of her sleepy religious slumber where she thinks a relationship with you is based on systematic discipline task things rather than a knowing of you that she can yes receive discipline in these things from actual you that Discipline to action comes as a result of our communion with you. Not, it is not an avenue by which we gain communion. Father, please help us stop striving and working and dying to do something for you. Please help us rest in the knowing that we are already loved. There's nothing we need to do in order for you to care for our needs. That if we want to do anything, it comes as a result of loving you and being loved by you. And that we can seek things that are pleasing to you for us to be doing from the actual person of God. Lord, please help us to stop using scripture as a weapon. Please help us to see it as something to understand you, to let you guide us into the word for you to lead us through a way to understand other personal stories for a book, a compilation of testimonies. Please help us to read your word as a way to understand what has happened to us after we have been born again. Please help us to stop needing to get something from you and please teach us what it means to live satisfied in our Lord and for any of my brothers and sisters for my own life where I have lost my first love of you where we have lost our first love of you where we have fallen asleep where we are less alive where we are less bridled to you where we are seeking answers from any place other than the depths of your own heart lord please redirect us back to you please remind us how to gaze at your possibly beautiful face how to sit in the presence of your spirit who in his full glory is who convicts us of our own shortcomings and sin, please. Help us to long for you, be sensitive to you, and to seek everything directly from you, the living person of God. Jesus, thank you that you died to bring us this kind of living relationship with the person, the interactive person of God. Please wake up and remind our hearts that he is real, that God is real and he is alive and he is speaking from his now mouth. That those words may look like scripture, that he may activate and bring alive the scripture, but that he is a living 
breathing person who loves us, not as a chore, not as a checklist item, not as a caregiving task, but fiercely, passionately loves us with every ounce of his being simply because it's who he is and what he made us for. He made us for his love. Please help remind us what it is like to be loved that intensely. Please help restore our faith. Please remove our unbelief, cause us to believe again and bring us home to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen.